In this video, I'm gonna show you how I added lightsabers to this super fun engagement photo. It was at the end of the photo shoot and I popped out my lightsaber that was 3D printed and I said, hey guys, do you like Star Wars? And they said, of course we do. And I said, well, what do you think about doing a lightsaber photo just for fun? And they had big smiles on their faces and of course they said yes. So uh, they're holding the two halves of a broken 3D printed lightsaber <laughs> that my kids, I love them, uh, broke in half. And you know, it's just a good placeholder. It's kind of a sh shiny silver object in their hand. It does the job. Uh, if you wanna do lightsaber photos like this, but you don't have a nice replica lightsaber, uh, there's a lot of LED flashlights that look great. They're silver, they're the right size, and they're easy to hold. And of course, they even emit light at the end, which helps with some photos to get some realistic lighting on people's faces or on the ground. So if you wanna do a cool lightsaber photo, you don't have to own a three, four, or $500 replica. You just have to have an LED flashlight or something of the right size in your hand. And without a blade there, it might get a little tricky, but I'm gonna show you my trick on how to overcome that and to draw a saber that's straight and the right size in place where the blade would be. Okay, so let's get started. We're basically going to draw trace lines to help us draw the blade. So first, let's start with this one over here. Okay, so I'm gonna use the line tool over here. If you press U, you'll get to your shapes. And I'm going to make the thickness, uh, say eight pixels to make it easier to see. Make the color bright red and make sure it's a solid line, not dashed or anything like that. We're going to erase this later, don't worry, but it's just a visual guide. Now I can see the top of his hilt and obviously, obviously I know where the middle is, right here, where the, ble where the blade would come out. The bottom or the pummel, I can't see, so I'm gonna have to guess a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to have to eyeball it. So I'm going to start my line right about here and drag up. Now using what I can see, there we go. That's pretty good. And let's zoom in. Yeah, that looks straight to me. So that's the guideline for his saber. And for hers, we can also see the top. So I know where the center is, but I can't see the bottom because these are really short. Again, this is one <laughs> hilt that got broken in half um, by my lovely kids. So... Let's draw a line here. Try to do it straight out. Right there looks good. Okay. So as far as the length goes, hers looks a little long and his might be a little short. So we can uh, fix that by going to the direct selection tool. Now what this is going to do is allow you to grab control points on a curve. Now even though this is a line, it's technically a rectangle. <laughs> so there's two points on the end. So we need to grab just those two points and we can drag them out or in. Uh, we do need to be uh, careful that we keep it straight, of course. So let's go to that line, uh, direct selection tool. I'm going to click on the end. And now they're already selected. Let me unselect them so I can show you what it looks like. So when a, a point is uh, selected, it's blue. So I'm gonna click right there and hold shift, click right there. Now I can drag them in, click and drag. Say about right there is good. And on his, let's select his shape, which is here. Grab that end and shift that end and then drag it, oops. You can also use your arrow once you have them selected to move them much more exactly. Yeah, I think that's good right there. Okay, so we got our uh, guidelines and she wanted hers to be green and he wanted his to be yellow. So I'm gonna do that again. And uh, let's make our layer for her saber. I'm just gonna call it her saber. <laughs> Click B for brush. I'm gonna use a Photoshop brush that allows you to control the hardness. So we don't want a pure hard saber blade, but we'd also don't want it to be soft and blurry. We want it to be, um, maybe let's try 80%. Let's see what 80 looks like. Press D to make your foreground and background colors black and white, and then press X to invert them in case you need to. Now we've got a pure white brush, so you can paint, there we go. And let's make these, the, the blade about as thick as the, um, the opening hole there. So a little bit thicker right there. I think that's a good thickness right there. Okay, so here's a nice trick. Uh, you can hold shift to draw a perfectly straight line with brush. So what you do is first you draw point A, which is the emitter where the saber comes out. And don't worry, I know we're coloring over her. We'll fix that later. So do one dot right there, hold shift and draw at the end of the line. There we go, cool. So shift basically connects point A with point B, perfectly straight line and uh, you don't have to do anything tedious. Now let's make his layer, make a new layer. Call it his saber. Again, we're going to draw right in the middle, and I need to shrink my brush down just one 
one notch. There we go. So click right in the middle and then hold shift and click at the end of the red line. There we go. Great. So now we can get rid of our guidelines, which are these shape layers. I don't know why there's three of them. Just do that. Okay, now let's zoom in and uh, fix this uh, blade on her saber layer. I'm going to go to the eraser tool, shrink it down real small. And actually, let's make this layer a little transparent so we can see what's below it. So again, E for eraser. I'm just going to erase this area. I'll zoom in real close so I can get exact. Because if you get these pixels wrong and work like this and you zoom out, you can often tell there's just something a little wobbly or off or you know not right when uh, when you don't get these pixel when this when you don't get this kind of pixel work right uh, the same goes for masking and things like that uh, retouching okay let's zoom into his make it a little transparent over here the fader opacity fader or slider and let's erase this right along the edge remember to give it that curve of the cylinder there you go. And his his uh, saber is a little crooked, so we can use the arrow. Just go up, over. Um, there we go. Okay, and let's fix their opacity back to 100%. You can also press uh, number zero to bring it back to 100. Click on her layer, press zero, back to 100% opacity. Cool. Now we're going to do the fun part, which is the glow or the fall off color uh, due to the saber's energy. So let's zoom into hers and double click on this empty area. This will get us to layering styles. Okay, now we're going to turn on two of them. We're going to turn on outer glow and inner glow. Okay, so outer glow, I used this recently for a different lightsaber, so my colors are already set for red, uh, but let's change it to green. So just click on this color, change it to uh, pure bright, bright green. And as far as the settings, we want the blend mode to be on screen. Opacity, usually want to be 100%, but sometimes you need to turn it down a little bit if it's a bit much, maybe like 75, but I'm going to put it at 100 for now. Noise, zero. Spread, make it zero. And now the size is up to you, but I, I always say the size of the uh, of either side of the fall off needs to be as thick as the saber is in the middle. So right now, it looks good. This is too much. This is too little. Right about there is perfect, even on both sides. Um, range needs to be in the middle, although sometimes you do need to tweak it to give it either a fuller shape or a uh, softer shape. But the starting point should be 50%. And that's good right there. Now the inner glow is a little different. We want it to be on normal. And let's make the color uh, pure green. And the size, you don't want it to cover up too much white. We also don't want it to be like invisible. So for this example, uh, looks like nine to 10 is good. And I'm gonna tweak my softness down here just to give it some of the, the soft edge of green, but then it, the, the, in the core of the blade is still pure white. Cool, so I'm gonna zoom in so you can really see what this looks like. There we go, that's nice. Let's do his saber now, so I'm going to zoom into him and double click on this empty space on his layer and that will bring up layer styles. When you turn on outer glow, it remembers the last settings you did. So it's already there, it's already green, I need to change it to yellow. Just click down there. Okay, and then turn on inner glow there we go. This is an orange, which looks pretty cool on the inside of a yellow saber. I like that. And again, you can play with opacity to get it right, to just get a good balance, and then range down here to get a, a nice soft fall off. So it's not just like a thick line of yellow on the inside of the blade, because remember, there's pure energy, so you got to have nice soft curves. Okay, now let's change the tip of the saber to be more pointy, because in some of the movies, it's kind of a sharp, like a, almost like a katana tip, but it's symmetrical. So to do that, we've got our white brush, right click and change the width to about half of what it was. And then we need to rotate it 90 degrees from what the blade is. So I'm gonna just eyeball and see if this will work. There we go. And then maybe size it down with bracket one time. And if you paint, oh, it's a little crooked. Let's rotate it a little bit more. This way is very tedious. I wish there was an easier way to rotate the brush, like a key command or something. Mm, there, no, wrong way, it's backwards. If you wanna rotate it left, you gotta rotate this right. <laughs> Again, I don't know why. It's still crooked. Let's do one more little tweak. Let's try that. There we go. That's good enough. Okay. Um, not exact. I can tell it looks a little funky, but that's okay. Let's click on her saber. Rotate it opposite. Opposite. Let's try that. A few clicks can kind of fill in those little empty spots. There we go. Cool. 
All right, to add an extra splash of color to your lightsaber photos, I suggest making a new layer and putting it on color mode. You can also try a soft light and sometimes screen, depending on your scene. And let's go to our brush, and I have a really soft brush. You can also use your brush and just turn the hardness down all the way, but I have like a super soft fall off brush I made, uh, which I have a video about how to make custom brushes. And we're gonna paint with green over here and then yellow over his saber. So I'm gonna put my color to green, top right, and opacity really low, like 20%. So just press the number two, and you can paint real low right there, and then yellow on top of his. This will color anything yellow or green underneath it. Now she's a bit too green. <laughs> she looks like She-Hulk, which is ironic because she actually cosplays as She-Hulk. So let's turn our rate. I'm going to use my eraser now to kind of undo some of that green. There we go. We want some green on her hands to look like, uh, you know, color cast. Because if a lightsaber was on, there would be a lot of color shooting all over the place. Now let's make another layer, set it to soft light, and I'm going to use gradients this time. So paint bucket and then gradient tool. I'm going to use a circle gradient. And um, I've already got their colors kind of set up here. I'm going to make this one actually green. There we go. So this color is going from yellow to green, and I'm just going to draw it over the whole thing. There we go. So that's too much. I'm going to move it over a little bit. Uh, oh, it's radial. Let's do a, a linear gradient. There we go. And turn that soft, certain, turn that layer way down. It's just adding a little splash of color. If you turn it on and off, it's kind of like a color grading trick to add uh, some extra color that you want. And it, it'll start to overpower the, other, uh, the opposite colors. Other steps that I would do to enhance this photo would be, of course, to add some sparks and some overlays, a little bit of fog behind them or in front of them. Uh, but this isn't truly a Star Wars photo, so maybe I just want to leave it here and not go too crazy with it. You could also do some dodge and burning to their bodies to add extra light on their fronts and make shadows on the bottom parts where the lightsaber would be casting a shadow. But that's totally up to you, and I have another video about dodge and burning as well if you're interested in that. So that's it. hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, subscribe and like the video, please. That will encourage me to make more videos of these kinds. So let me know if you liked this video in the comments or if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great week.